Hello, thank you for joining us today. Another of our Port Ancient series. Uh, this time we'll be highlighting uh, Per Hay Studio with Dr. Brianna Jackson. Uh, just a brief intro as we always give, what is SASA, the Save Alli Ancient Studies Alliance? Our mission is to reverse the current downward trend in the study of the ancient world by engaging the public and bringing together students and scholars to share their passion for the study of the ancient world in order to inspire a vast new generation of students. Uh, you can find us on all of the typical social media web pages, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. Our live event protocol, as usual, please just be kind and respectful. Listen and ask thoughtful questions throughout the event. We'll read them off if you pop them in the chats. Please be patient with technology and those administering it. And our live events are live streamed on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. And the recordings will be posted on the above platform shortly after the event as well. And lastly, have fun. If you enjoy our live events, our Archeo Gaming, book clubs, reading groups, uh, Port Ancient live streams, please consider becoming a supporter with a monthly donation. For as little as $3 a month, you can help us save ancient studies. Uh, just go to saveancientstudies.org slash donate to learn more. And lastly, thank you for joining us. And yeah, now I'll just, as usual, turn it over to uh, Dr. Jackson a bit. Uh, please introduce yourself, share a bit about your project with us. Oh, okay. Oh, this is always the hardest part. You know, like, where do you stop talking about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so just put the pause button anytime you think you need to. Um, so yes, I mean, I'm Dr. Brianna Jackson. Um, I just received my PhD in 2021. I almost said 2001. I'm like, wait a minute, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> 2021. Um, and it was during the last year of my PhD that I developed my, you know, quote unquote studio, which I called Per Hai, um, and, or Per Hai, if you want to say it that way, that's totally fine. Um, that's it's, the American in me. I'm just going to butcher everything. No, 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 no. This isn't American or anything because we're actually just speaking ancient Egyptian, which we don't really know how it was pronounced. So it's, you know, your True. guess is as good as mine uh, and any other Egyptologists. Um, and so the reason that I started it was because I was really stressed out writing my 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 dissertation and um one thing that I do is when I'm really stressed I, I channel that into something creative um I already had a YouTube channel that I was actually using for compilation videos I put together for my favorite tv shows <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought you know what how about I just change it rebrand and do Egyptology things um and I had been watching, you know, video game Let's Plays and all of this other stuff on, on YouTube. And I thought, oh, what if I started playing games um, about ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia with the tagline, Egyptologist plays such and such. Um, so that's what I started doing. And at the same time, I also wanted to make um, educational videos about ancient Egypt. And um, I can I can talk about those individually. Uh, you know, I'll let you, you know be the manager of all yeah. of this um but um one of the ones I, I have a series two different series one is object stories and one is ancient lives on the nile and i came up with those ideas because i was kind of frustrated with how tv shows portray ancient egypt um mm -hmm. and i wanted to make my own tv show <laughs> 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 um, but i can talk more about those individually so i decided that i should call it something you know my my overall project and so I came up with <laughs> per high because it means house of rejoicing and ah. since it's in my apartment <laughs> this is my house of rejoicing <laughs> so I that. that's why I called it that and the logo is actually um the, the those are the hieroglyphs that say per high except for the the female figure it's supposed to be a male figure because I'm female I made it a female figure instead. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so that's the long story of how the term came about. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, that's interesting. And was there like a big re, I know it was, must have been a hard shift going into something more, at least tangentially academic from what you were doing before. Uh, did you keep a lot of the same audience? I imagine you um, picked up a new audience as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I, I I do see my subscriber count all um, um, fluctuating a lot, um, which is fine. I knew that would happen. I was like, I don't care if I if I lose all of these people, not because I don't care about the people. Yeah, because, of course. Yeah, you know, I understand. I'm completely changing mm -hmm. everything. And I was um, originally I was keeping those videos on there because I thought, oh, why don't I just do both? And then I just continued to actually rebrand. Originally, I was under the name Baledria, which is my handle on um, Instagram and Twitter and Twitch. Um, and that, that's there's a whole long story behind that as well. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> um, ask. What, what <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that for sure. <laughs> um, and then I thought, you know what? Because I'm going more towards an educational route, and I thought that this could actually be beneficial for my career in general. Um, I thought, why don't we just go completely scholar on this? I changed the name to Dr. Brianna Jackson, uh, and I deleted all of the videos that were not my own, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> creation. So, you know, all of my my Frasier and Star Trek videos disappeared. I oh. deleted them, and it was really sad because I had oh, like no. two million views on some of them. Yeah. Um, but it's fine, you know, like I, I and now I don't really care about views. I don't really care about how many subscribers I have. I just want to make the videos because they're fun. Um, and if I have just one viewer, then I'm totally happy with that. And I get really excited when I see comments. I'm like, oh, people are talking. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> talking really watching me. me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I, but luckily I keep seeing more subscribers. Um, because and, and this is really great to see because now I, I am seeing that there is an interest um, and a lot of people are interested and and I do have three different series that I offer so in a way you might say that it's still not really um, extremely focused in one direction because I do have archaeo gaming videos and I have the um, the the solid like ed education videos mm -hmm. um, so I do have two different audiences I guess you could say um and I think that's fine and I don't know if, yeah. if some people delete or unsubscribe because they don't like my archaeo gaming ones and maybe they think I have too many of those or whatever but even so I still have an audience that's watching and just if I have just one person then I feel like I'm successful in that regard you know <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I understand that completely <laughs> You're, Sorry, I'm, you're, like fidgety. I'm like moving all over the place with my no, it's fine. <laughs> I just realized that one of these days I'm gonna like punch my microphone here I, I notice <laughs> I spin a lot in my chair and oh, do you? Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're not alone I'm just like, like constantly going back and forth <laughs> and I, subconsciously I'm like people must find that annoying after a while I'm oh like, I don't think so I think it's, it's better because you know when you're moving around I think people pay more attention actually so oh, I think and, maybe we're doing a good thing here <laughs> I'm glad my anxiety is paying off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I know you said you do some educational videos. Uh, do they focus on, I know you, there's a variety of topics, but is there anything in particular that you like to focus on or any thread that kind of ties them together? Oh, okay. Um, so for ancient Egyptian object stories, uh, I'm all over the place <laughs> in terms of uh, time time frame um, because I am just taking one object or a, you know, a group of objects that are related to each other at a time, and and I now in my real research, my real life. I mean, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's all real life but I kind of consider doing YouTube things not real life it's like fun life I don't know it's an extra yeah <laughs> <laughs> in my in my traditionally academic life I um focus on the 18th dynasty which is the uh, for for those who aren't familiar with it this is the dynasty in which King Tutankhamun lived um or King Tut as he's more commonly known, um, and Akhenaten, who's my boy. Mine <laughs> um, too. Yeah, all right, well, we my favorite <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that's the time period that I normally focus on. But for object stories, I go all over the place because I think it's important to you know in, introduce people to a lot. And these videos are really, really short. So I think of them as just, you know, if you're, I don't know, on the subway or something, and you want to do something with the time that you're traveling, you can just quickly watch that. Or, you know, if you're mm -hmm. just drinking a coffee, and you just think, okay, what's on YouTube today? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just, I wanted them to be quick, but I wanted them also to cover a lot of um, different periods of ancient Egypt and also to cover objects that people are not necessarily familiar with. Um, I get a lot of comments of people saying, I didn't know about this object before. I didn't know about this object before. I'm like, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> now you do know about it and you can tell all of your friends. Um, <laughs> but um, so yeah, that's just, uh, and that, that's kind of more art historical um, um, and more like museum based. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I do a formal analysis and then I do like a, you know, um, I, I talk about the, the history, the, the, the social context, the importance, the religious significance and all of the things that are involved um, with that particular object and what that object can tell us about ancient Egypt in general. Um, so the other series, and I, I do more of those videos at a time because they're, they're more quick. Yeah, um, yeah. But the other series that I do, and I only have three episodes because it takes forever to make those <laughs> videos. Um, it's called Ancient Lives on the Nile. And I and I love this one. <laughs> Personally, this is my favorite series that uh, that I work on. And this covers themes in ancient Egypt. Um, and so the first three that I did were more international relations um, in the Bronze Age. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm more of a Bronze Age girl. Um, and I know, you know, Kate, who does Archeo Gaming, she, she and I kind of like go back and forth over Iron Age, Bronze Age. She's an Iron Age yeah. girl, I'm a Bronze <laughs> Age girl, and I'm like, Bronze Age is better. And she said, no, <laughs> Iron Age all the way. Um, but I, I do focus on the Bronze Age more in those videos. And Bronze Age is like between 3000 and 1000 BC, um, give or take, give or take a few hundred years. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and... So the first three have been international relations, which is another one of my areas of interest um, in, in my traditional academic research. Um, and uh, the inspiration I had for those was from 1990s TV documentaries, specifically Mysteries of the Bible. Um, and I loved the way that they presented I have a lot of nostalgia for that particular show because I watched it growing up and the there are two narrators. Um, their voices were just really comforting to me when I was a kid. <laughs> so it just, it fills me with 90s nostalgia. Um, but the format that they have is they have a voiceover, like they have the guy narrating the topic. They mm -hmm. have scholars who they interview. And I mean like real scholars, not you know ancient aliens guys yeah. with yeah. crazy hair. Um, <laughs> And then uh, they have another narrator, um, Jean Simmons. She's got this amazing voice and I wish I had her voice. I just want to like steal it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like in the, the Little Mermaid, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep singing and I'll take that. Thank you. Um, but she narrates actual passages from religious texts, whether that is the, the Bible or, or a historical text like Josephus. Um, and it's actually that show that I learned about Josephus and I incorporate his his um, histories in my Roman history course that I teach. Mm -hmm. But I loved that format because you're not only getting the information from the scholars, but you're also getting the information from the people in the ancient past themselves. And for me, this was very important. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to incorporate that format for my, um, my TV show, as I call it, um, <laughs> And another reason that I wanted to incorporate that is because so often when people approach ancient Egypt, and I'm talking about the mainstream, not Egyptologists, well, some Egyptologists too, but we won't name them. Um, <laughs> God, they're going to cancel me, I'm sure. <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> um, and so uh, one thing that I noticed is that people approach ancient Egypt like it's some kind of fantasy world. Yes. And they don't think of the ancient Egyptians as, as people. Um, and so by introducing ancient Egypt from their texts that they themselves wrote, 
uh, especially letters, because this is an individual's voice being, you know, um, transmitted. Um, I thought that this was the perfect way to to introduce ancient Egypt to make people understand that these were people like us and we can relate to them. You know, we can understand them as you know, just like somebody who lives next door to you. Yeah. Right. right? Um, you know, these are real people. They had lives. They had families. They had interests. Uh, they had favorite colors. You know. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, you know, this was really important to me. And it's something I like to bring out when I teach ancient Egyptian art, um, especially, you know, I hate this term mummy because it just, to me, it, it objectifies uh, the human remains that yeah. were uh, excavated. So I really tried to bring out the humanness of ancient Egypt and it, it, being able to do that with my my TV show um, <laughs> for me is is just it's so fulfilling and being able to share that with a broad audience, not just in a classroom. Um, it's just I, I love it so much. I love it. It takes forever, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's so important. I agree with you there um, because Egypt is often, and that's what got me into it. I admit, as a kid, was it seemed like this mystical kind of yeah, yeah. almost fantasy land, like so different from what we see in our normal life. Yep. Um, and, you know, Kara Cooney brought up something as well in when we talk, talked during our book club along those lines of, you know, that's why it's so important to kind of humanize yep. those in the past. Yep. And yeah, it sounds like you do that in a great way, given the variety of videos that you have out there. You never know what's going to grab someone and pull them into this world. You know, for me, it was mythology, but for someone else, it could be something completely mundane. Yep. Um, so yeah, something I do like to ask with these is what brought you into the world of classics or ancient history? What was the thing that interested you initially? Oh, you know, the funny thing is, uh, my, my, one of my sisters wanted to be an Egyptologist when she was a kid and I, I didn't like I wanted to be a farmer a ballerina uh, and a veterinarian and, and the veterinarian is the one that I actually uh, decided to go into college for um, but the whole time I was interested like I, I thought it was interesting when my when my parents would watch tv shows like mysteries of the bible which is also based on archaeology and you know things like that mm -hmm. so it was generally interesting to me um and in high school, I got a little bit more interested in history. I used to hate history when I was a kid in, in school. I, I hated history. Um, but I started to get actually interested in it in, in high school. Um, and I worked at a library, too. I started my first job was at a library. And I worked there until I graduated university. Um, and I started as a, as a shelver. And so I encountered this book called River God. And it was about ancient Egypt and it was about the second intermediate period. And it was the first time I ever heard about this time period. And, um, and I thought it would be interesting to read it. And so when I first started reading it and I saw that it was in first person narrative, I was like, oh, I don't like first person. But by the end of that first page, I was hooked. Something about this book, man, I, I can't even tell you. It's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. I recommend it to everyone. And I read this in 2004. And it was that book that actually got me interested in Egypt in particular. Um, and it's and and it got me and it's the second intermediate period that got me interested in Egypt, but that's not the period that I study because that's like my <laughs> that's like my my guilty pleasure. Yes, I <laughs> get that. But my actual research is on Akhenaten. Um, and that's why my, my last video called The Chaos Corridor was so exciting because I finally got to tell the story that I've been wanting to tell for years. <laughs> and it's about the second intermediate period. So I got to finally, you know, delve into my, my guilty pleasure. Um, but yeah, it was that that got me really interested in ancient anything. So I started taking elective courses in whatever they had for ancient and mostly it was ancient Greece. Um, mm -hmm. And I just kept taking these courses. Now, when I went into university, I wanted to become a veterinarian. So I started as a bio major, a biology major. Um, and in high school, I also took French. And I, you know, I really enjoyed learning about France. Um, on my mother's side, we have French ancestry. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And I was really interested uh, in, in the language and being able to learn the language. I had to fight with my dad to let me take French instead of <laughs> Spanish. Like we, we went at it and finally he's like, okay. Um, so, uh, and 
my my French teacher in in high school was awful. Um, I didn't learn anything from her. Sorry, um, not sorry because she just she was awful. Yeah. Um, very nobody nobody was learning anything, and so I had to teach myself, and then I taught the class. <laughs> <laughs> I had an underground French teaching course. Um, anyway, so when I got into college in the first semester, I was in fourth level French, French one hundred four, and the TA was um or you know the, it was uh she was a, a graduate student i'm sure so they had all of the graduate students teaching the intro uh, intro language courses um <clears throat> she had just come from france mm -hmm. and she was talking a mile a minute and my high school french teacher never actually spoke french very much so i mm -hmm. had no experience listening to it and i was panicking but in two weeks like just because i had to i was able to pick it up real quick um, I mean, I already had the grammar basics and all of these things, but um, anyway, so she made me want to become a French major, and mm -hmm. so I changed my major in my first semester to French, um, and so I thought that this was what I was going to do. I thought I was going to be teaching. I thought I was going to be a high school French teacher. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time I was taking these ancient courses, and by the time we get to the last, the, the last uh, end, uh, like the end of the French major, we were just in my opinion, reading too many books set in modern times, and I'm not interested in that. I wanted to read stuff like I have a whole course on Victor Hugo, maybe, um, but that was never an option. And so I just started to become just disenchanted with French major, but and more enchanted with antiquities. And finally, I took this course, and it was in this course that I changed everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, at this time, I was still working at the library. I was uh, full time. I was a children's librarian, um, library assistant, and mm -hmm. you know, like I had a solid job. It was steady. It was stable. I had a, I had a stable life ahead of me. I had a stable life ahead of me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, in this course that I took, it was on ancient Egyptian um, and Mesopotamian religion and literature. And when the teacher was talking about uh, this, the concept of ma'at, which is, you know, the balance in nature, essentially, um, cosmic order and things like this. It was that moment, it was in October of 2008, that she, she talked about this, and I just knew right away that I was going to be an Egyptologist. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I just, in, in a flash, I just said, okay, I'm going into Egyptology. So I changed my major to classics because that was the closest that they had for um, Egyptology at the University of Illinois in Chicago, which is where I was going. Um, and I knew that I would have to apply for graduate school. At that time, I didn't, I didn't, I never even heard of graduate school. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is also bizarre, you know, it's, um, and so I, uh, I knew I had to you know, apply to something called graduate school, which would mean that I would probably have to move and quit my, my steady job. And, you know, just I, I had this stability in front of me and I just, I just gave all of that up to go into yep. Egyptology. And the reason I did that was because although I knew that there was a risk of complete failure, <laughs> <laughs> which is okay, um, I knew that you know, 40 years from now, looking back, if I, I would, I knew that I would be, uh, I knew I would regret not taking that risk. Exactly. And so I never second guessed my choice. I just said, this is what I'm, this is what I'm going to try. I'm going to try it. And hopefully it works out. <laughs> <laughs> and it has so and far. It it's, it's, yep. <laughs> that's my long story. I'm, I'm sorry if that was too long. No, ago. no, it's great. I love hearing about things, about people's experiences like that entering the field. As I'm just starting grad school myself. Oh, yes. It's really intimidating. So, <laughs> so it's, it's always interesting to hear how people got started and see where you can end up hopefully yeah yeah, yeah. And that's where things like her high sasa can come into play because we're doing things in that alternative academia you know all that yes. i've heard it's called recently yes and yes. it's if in anything it's expanding opportunities i think for people to enter the fields and have a discourse absolutely um, and yeah, we have maybe a few minutes left. Do you have any upcoming projects or anything like that that you want to get the word out about or talk about? 
Um, well, my well, I got I got a fly <laughs> around here. <laughs> he wants to join the the, the, the uh, interview. Um, I the next video that I'm doing for Ancient Lives on the Nile is uh, it's on the people who built the Valley of the Kings. Um, they left a lot of very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> letters and documents for us um, and I'm looking forward to highlighting one particular individual named Pa Neb um, who was just a menace in this uh, little <laughs> in this little town because it was you know it was a very small town everybody knew each other it was like one of those kinds of places um, and he was sleeping with every other guy's wife and and he was threatening to kill people he was he's quite a character and so yeah I'm going to be uh highlighting him and, and all of his neighbors <laughs> from a site <laughs> called Daryl Medina, which in antiquity it was called Set Mat, um, the and uh, the place of truth and the people who lived there were called the servants in the place of truth. So that's going to be the next Ancient Lives on the Nile video. And don't ask me when it's going to be ready because I don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> scratch that next, next question. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I know our Archeo gaming is just starting up. Or will you be helping with that in the fall? Do we have that to look forward oh, to. Oh, um, I mean, if if I am invited, I will definitely uh, say yes. Okay, <laughs> that'll be, that that'll be really then. fun. But <laughs> I, I always uh, try to catch the streams, um, which are on Fridays at two. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and luckily, I don't teach that day, so I'm like, I'm there, um, and you know, I try to be in the chat. Um, and but you know I mean if, if I'm not visibly on the screen then I will definitely be watching because I, I love those streams so <laughs> <laughs> perfect thank you for your time today thank we you. did put links to your work in our chat so definitely everyone check oh, out Dr. You. Jackson's work uh, and <laughs> we'll end the stream now <laughs>